Hello, welcome to the welcome to my channel. So I'm going to be doing a math tutorial today um, to create a triangle using three different equations with the form y equals mx plus b, where the triangle is in quadrant two, and it has an area of greater than five centimeter or uh, five units squared. And lastly, m for any of the three cannot equal zero or undefined. So, I would start with this. Draw an x and y axis. This was the challenge problem that I gave in class. Some people came up with it, but they did not have m, e they, m ha equaled one of these two. Once I have that right there, I am going to, I'm gonna draw a triangle. So I know that I can't just go like this, parallel to the x and y axis. So I'm gonna draw a little bit on an angle and I know that I do not want any of these to be horizontal or vertical, so that looks good. From there, this whole thing is going to be in quadrant two, and I'm gonna extend out my line so I can see where my y-intercepts would be and about what my slopes should be. So I got y-intercepts very close over here, and I wanna make sure that the slope of, we're gonna call this line A, line B, and line C, I know that I want the slopes of, that well, the product of slopes A times B to equal negative one, because I know that if I take the slope times its negative reciprocal and multiply it, I should get negative one. So from here, I'm now thinking about, about where is that point, where is this point, where is this point? So it looks like my, I'll start with B. I'm going to go ahead and say that my line B is going to be Y equals, let's say, let's make it a little more shallow, closer to horizontal. It's going to be one half, but it's negative one half x minus, you know, we could say plus zero. Um, that could, I could let that thing go through the, uh, through the origin. And then I'm gonna say that a, whoops, a is going to be y equals, and I want that to be perpendicular, I want this to be right, oh, sorry, I forgot. In the triangle, create a right triangle right triangle, I want y equals 2x, and it looks like I want that to land, let's say, let's say around 20 for safe. The higher it goes, the more likely it is that I will not crash into my x or y axis and my, it'll stay in here. All right, and then C, I wanna make sure is nice and high I don't want it to be parallel to this. I don't want it to be parallel to that. So I'm gonna say y equals, that looks pretty flat. I can, what if I just did one half? X plus, it looks like it's gonna also land around 20, but maybe a little lower, so we'll say plus 19. Now we'll say plus 18. All right, so now let's check out and see where these are equal to each other. So I wanna make sure that my intersections of A and B are in this quadrant, A and C are in this quadrant, and C and B are in this quadrant. So let's see, I'm gonna say A and B intersection is going to be negative one half X plus zero equals two X plus 20 Subtract 2x from both sides. I'm gonna end up with negative 2.5x equals 20. Divide both sides by negative 2.5. Five goes in four times, so 2.5 goes in eight times. All right, so x equals negative eight, so at negative eight, Let's see, that's gonna be negative 16 plus 20 is four. 
So I want all of my I want all of my x's to be negative. I want all my y's to be positive to be in that quadrant. So if I have that, let's see, so negative 8 in here, negative 16 plus 20, that should give me positive 4. Good. So I got negative 8, 4 is where A and B connect, right about there. So it's going to be negative 8, 4. And then I want to make sure that I keep this on the correct side. So C and A. Actually, let's double check. Oh no, I should get this. Never mind. I should. If I were to plug in negative eight into here, I should get the same thing. So negative eight times negative one half is going to give me positive four. Y equals positive four. Good. All right. So that's that one. C and A. If I set C and A equal to each other, I'll have one half x plus eighteen equals two x plus twenty. Subtract eighteen from both sides subtract 2x from both sides, I again end up with, sorry, I again am going to end up with, uh, just kidding, this is going to be different, negative 1.5x equals 2, divide both sides by 1 point, negative 1.5x, sorry, just negative 1.5, and I'm going to end up with, if I multiply both sides by 2, 3, and 4, so 4 over 3. It's going to be negative 4 over 3. All right, good that that's, x is going to be negative like we wanted. Now right, let's plug it back in here. So negative 4 over 3 times 1 half is going to give me negative 2 over 3 plus 18. That's going to be a positive number. All right, so the intersection between A and C is negative 4 over 3, comma, and we came to, what was that? Negative 2 over 3 plus 18 is going to be 17 and 1 third. All right, so that one's good. This one should be fine. As long as we get that, we get that, we should be all set. The only other thing we'll need to know is whether it takes up five units or not. So if this is negative four over three, comma, 17 and one third, I already know that my area, let's see, from four to 17, the line connecting these two is gonna be 13 long. 13 long and then it has to be bigger than that so it's going to be I know that A is going to be greater than 13 units and I know that B is going to be well I don't know yet so let's check that out so let's check out C and B so if I set C equal to B I get negative one half x is equal to one half x plus 18 uh, let's, I'm going to subtract one half x from both sides. End up with negative x equals 18, so x equals negative 18. All right, so this is going to go back negative 18. And if I plug in negative 18 into b, negative 18, that's going to be positive 9 for my y value here. So if I look at the distance between here and here on the x scale. So if I were to draw a right triangle, rise and run here, that is at least 10 units. So that's going to be greater than 10 units. 10 times 13 is going to be 130. And the area of that would be divided by 2, would be 65. We know that this will be at least 65 units squared. So that would be how you, now you could sort of skip some of these steps and you could make some assumptions, but if you wanted to check the entire thing, I know my work is sort of messy here, but that is how you would definitely, that would, that's how you could answer it and know that your answer is correct and not have any guesses. 
So let's see, are any of my M zero? Nope, nope, nope. Are any of them undefined? Nope, nope, nope. Do I have three equations? One, two, three. Is it a right triangle? Yes, because negative one half times two, B and A, their product is going to come to negative one. So we know that those are perpendicular and this is 90 degrees. And is it in quadrant two? Yes. Everything has a, has a negative x value and a positive y value. And is the area greater than five units? Yes, because A is at least 13 units long. Ten, B is at, is at least 10 units long. 10 times 13 is 130, so 1 half base times height. If we multiply those, you get 130 divided by 2 is 65 units squared. So we know it's at least 65 units squared. So I hope this was useful as this was the challenge problem for my, let's see, my F block class. I'll see you in the morning and you'll be answering that. So if you saw this ahead of time, you'll know exactly what to do rather than just not knowing what to do and being challenged. Hope it was useful. Thank you for watching. And let me know in the comments what else I can put so that I can teach you more. Stay weird.